last topic for last talk of our conference is how to make ICU a smart ICU. For this, I invite Dr. Raj Rawal on stage. Dr. Raj Rawal, MBBS MD, IFCCM consultant, critical care specialist, President Telemedicine of Society of India, Gujarat chapter. He is presently affiliated with and as Director of ICU Services, Sal Hospital, Bhopal ICU Trauma Center, Director of Nirogyam Hospital, Director, uh, Director of Arham Hospital, Director of Intel Health Technology Private Limited. Area of expertise, life support measures, clinical nutrition and tele-ICU. Good afternoon everyone. I'm very happy to see the audience. Well, because this is the last session of the conference and I've never seen such a, such a great audience. Uh, so I think this is the future of uh, health, digital health. That is an initiative by uh, our PM Narendra Modi sir. And uh, so today's, uh, this last topic is how to make your ICU smart ICU. So I think before thinking about how to make, first we have to think that what is the need? Whether our ICU need to be a smart ICU? What do you mean by smart ICU? What do you mean by smart? See, initially we are using a, a, a simple mobile, which is just for incoming and outgoing calls. Now we have a smart mobile. So we are doing all, everything on mobile, right from mailing, your all bank, your financial transactions, everything you are doing through the mobile. So that is, that is a, a, a transition from a simple instrument to the smart in instruments. So this is a clinical scenario in intensive care. I think uh, so many gadgets, so many lines, so many datas. Now we, we move to the datas. So many conglomerations of datas. So it's a very complex and heterogeneous environment. That is due to patient is very, very sick. So many consultants are involved. Very stressful environments because the things are changing fast. There is a very dynamic dynamicity in the in the course of the illness and the treatment. There are numerous sophisticated monitoring and life support devices. They are generating multiple streamings and so many data. So we have to have a a, a, a solid foolproof hard data that will help you to conclude something because by having so many data you may go haywire and that is happening so we wanted something more what we want we want a system with added intelligence that helps to avoid the variability in practice and make a sound decision so we, we required a help of technology, we required a help of artificial intelligence. So by, by having all your data, they help you to interpret it in a, in, a, in a very professional way, in a very prolific way. So in short, we need to refine our clinical practice. So the data come from varied, varied source, we know. And they are not very well organized. We even, we have a very varied IO chart. I'm sure everybody has a different IO chart. So whenever you see other IO chart, you may get confused for two, two three days. You, you may have some time, you may get some time to accommodate yourself. So all these things, the confusion, the conflict, the mental conflict, the mental constipation, we need to avoid to have a good clinical practice. And the most important thing why we need to develop smart ICU is when we have started thinking about, let us think, let us start thinking about smart ICU. This is, this we is for us, why we have started thinking. So we, we thought that all these products which are available, like the electronic medical record software, HEPA registered software, you have a, a integration software, they are very costly, it's very costly. 
So we thought that let us make our indigenous product. And then we have started thinking in that direction since last five years. And that's why we have started to develop smart ICU. So what actually we need? We need a users friendly tool that can collect enormous volume of data in ICU that organize and process data and return it as a useful information for doctors and nurses. And that accurate information helps to improve the quality and safety and efficiency of your practice. To turn your information into knowledge and that support in decision making. To provide knowledge to help distinguish effectiveness from futility. Sometimes we are remembering so many things which actually that doesn't require. So uh, it helps to develop new algorithms, clinical pathways and protocols to generate new knowledge that we can offer to the scientific community. And that all things we can put on the big data analytics and then in a future with a lacks of data, you can have a better AI. So that's why we need smart ICU. Apart from that, if you look at the current Indian scenario, we have a very huge gap of critical care specialist and qualified staff in the periphery of India. So there is a terrific shortage. So I think we need these smart ICUs so that at least we can monitor from the, from the command center, from the higher center, and we can guide them. As the Lancet, India ranks 145 along the 195 countries in terms of quality and accessibility of healthcare. If you look at the problem state, uh, statement, then there is no enough supply of critical care specialist even for the next two decades. There is difficult to transfer sick patient to higher center. So many times we have seen that patient dies during, the trans tra during transport. There is very high mortality rates in ICU because there is a poor, poor uh, uh, trained staff. There is no qual qualified uh, doctors there. There is a lack of protocol driven ICU. As I told, uh, there is a huge scarcity of trained staff. There is a lack of real time intervention to treat patient. Sometimes patient required a prompt treatment and that is not available because of untrained staff in the periphery, so patient die. So these are all the problems. That's why we need to think about the smart ICU. So how it works? So this is a, a technology through hub and spark. Suppose your patient is in ICU. We have installed all these things. Now what to install in smart ICU? We'll think in a few uh, in the next slides. So virtually there is a collaborative rounds with the uh, on-site physician and tele-ICU consultants. Then the decision will take care through the protocol driven care and with the, uh, with the thorough discussion with the on-site physician. If on-site physician not available, medical officer, you can guide them. The specialist, they, he's viewing all information through command center. The clinician who is sitting in the command center can have a talk with the patient. The patient is awake with the relatives. He can counsel. He can consult with the on-site consultants. And then the decision was taken, then what to do. And I think that will help to optimize the care. So this is a hub and spoke model. Now what we install to make ICU smart, there are basically four components I can say. One is integration. So all integratable monitors, whatever the instruments in ICU, whether it is a, a multivera monitor, infusion pump, syringe pump, ventilator, even uh, some DVT pumps are also integratable. Whatever integratable, we have to integrate that. So all data comes to your command center. You can set alarms from here because now there is a protocol based uh, solution for all these uh, newer advanced monitors. So you can set alarm from here. If the, if the uh, medical officer doesn't know that this patient has 
uh, we have to uh, think about the tachycardia and we have to uh, this patient is more vulnerable patient with uh, some valvular heart disease so we have to take care about tachycardia so you can set alarm from the command center so that is about device integration second is clinical information system so you have a HIS I think everybody is now very much aware about the electronic medical records the Gujarat government, not Gujarat, sorry, Indian government is is uh, is after this uh, HIS. So maybe in the down the line another five ten years, everybody is very very aware about, about HIS, even in government sector. So that is your clinical information system, all all datas from right from the admission to discharge. So admission, consent form, consultant notes, drug orders, IO chart, everything is getting automatized so that is your HIS third thing is monitoring so that is we we, we uh, install the PTZ camera at all beds so that monitor the patient 24 into 7 there is one intensive is sitting in the command center and he monitor the patient he monitor the data he monitor the all monitors in the command centers and the fourth thing that is a uh, AV communication, yeah. audiovisual communication. So we keep a mobile card that is Wi-Fi enabled, so that the card is moving from patient to patients. So you can see the details, uh, detailing about the patients. Apart from the bedside camera, the trolley will help you to see the absolute details. Uh, we are able to see the secretion color or color uh, secretions color of the endotracheal tubes. We can see the pupillary reaction from this camera. It is that precise. So with these all four major component, we integrate everything. So you have all data av available. In, uh, plus there is a laboratory data. You have a uh, patient's IO chart that is getting automatized. So one hourly chart is updated. So practically you have all the data which are you available, which is available at the bedside. That is available at command center. Then, then you can have your scores, prognostical scores, the, the person sitting there, he can, he can have access to all the journals. We have one uh, desktop is, uh, we have update, we have chest, we have any gem, everything. So he's updated with the, all the informations, right? data mining we have early warning score so all the uh, um, alerts are available so practically except the physical examination you can access everything and there are so many data that physical examinations definitely required but at least with a good history and with a with a good data you can manage more than 70 percent and that is a huge number to save a life of someone. This is our cart, on cart, that was installed at one of our uh, tele ICU. So this is our command center, where there is a there is a six screen command center. With a six screen, we can able to manage at least hundred beds. We have two two per person at a time in the command center, twenty four into seven. So these are the uh, six screen which is dedicated. One is to the uh, PEX client that all the radiological uh, imaging uh, that comes into the, in that screen. The other is uh, the patient's overview. The third is patient sensors that is all HIS. Four is AV communication. Five is the monitoring. And six is auto charting. So this six screen is dedicated. So you have all the information real-time information. We see here, this we are now incorporating in our uh, software. So that is a safety index that to enhance the continuous monitoring of vital signs. Now there are so many uh, new tools available that can integrate your prognostic uh, question scores into the AI. So maybe in next two years you have a Apache score with a AI module. So it is very easy. When patient comes, you put all data. Automatically, you have prognostical data. So this vision is very, very easy tool. So what it uh, does, it, it has in continuous data collection, all the vitals. 
pulse rate, respiratory rate, SpO2, blood pressure, and temperature. Basic vital parameters, and they put into the single numbers. It is just like a uh, uh, putting into the single numbers, and single numbers gives you ideas. If, if the single numbers is more than three, then patient is mildly critical. If more than 3.5, then patient is very critical. So you can it just pop up that okay, this patient has a blood pressure is shooting up or patient has heart rate is coming down, or patient has high grade fever, it just shoot up. So at least that gives you alarm. So this is AI. This is a, this is a uh, next generation. This is the data fusion approach. So at the moment, they are collecting uh, data with a uh, patient of a cardiorespiratory, some patient of hip fracture, and uh, they don't include sepsis patient at the moment. But yes, in the future, you have a AI with a sepsis patient. This is work connect. So along with the ICU, we can even make OT also smart. Uh, we have all the data and we can connect everything and you can monitor a patient from the command center. So impact of smart ICU and advanced modeling uh, that definitely improved cares. So that reduce the hospital inflow by providing quality care to the remote centers. So at least the needy patients who really require tertiary care they can get the pay, get the bed if you if you treat the uh, the relatively uh, mild to moderate critically ill patients at the remote uh, at the remote area then at least your tertiary care icu will get a uh, the patient will get a bed which is definitely needed so provide technological support unconventional isolation center like railway coaches for better care so that is the future the modi sir has tried in during covid to make a railway coach for a, uh, for a COVID patients. All the data will help for a clinical research and that helps to build up a better uh, decision making artificial intelligence uh, algorithms. One intensivist can manage many patients. So that is a force multiplier, I'll tell you. See, if you are sitting in the ICU, the patient has a hypotension. Then if you are sitting, uh, or if you are standing there, you are about to do everything, right? So you have to put a central line, you have to put an arterial line, you have to intubate the patients. So one patient will, uh, at least uh, that will take one or two to two hours to settle the patients. While here, there is one person there whom you are training, whom you are you, you train initially during induction module. And then you have to just uh, order him to do that things. So it is very easy to use your expertise at a different center. You got my point? Because you don't, have to, you don't have, to, have to do all the procedures. You have to just execute. You have to use your expert. You have to use your expertise to make a clinical decision. All this execution is, is taken care of by other person. So when you are developing smart ICU, the first one month you have to train the supporting staff for all the emergency procedures. That's it. After that, one person can manage more, so many patients. Right, so that is a force multiplier. One, one intensive is training many people. So at, at the moment, we have 10 ICUs. So every Thursday, we are taking lectures. So that becomes very easy. If you have 100 ICUs, you can train so many, so many people at the same time. So multiple regional hospital connected through command center, that reduce risk, reduce health worker virus exposure risk. So definitely it reduces the risk of exposure. Expert doctors monitor and guide remotely across the globe. So sometimes second opinion is required. Already intensivist is there, but if required expert opinion, you can give them as a senior. Round the clock monitoring without human intervention. So that is possible. That you can monitor round the clock without human intervention. So trace and treat an early warning system. So you can uh, identify the patient before getting critically ill. So you can intervene early. So there are so many data that it helps to reduce mortality, it reduces length of stay, optimize human resources. So if there is one critical case specialist in the town and he is stuck up 24 hours, that, that, that doesn't make sense. 
rather than he trained 10 persons to do a procedures and then he, he monitor them and guide them that is a better use of expertise i think optimize hospital beds as i told you and that increase delivery of care at current whatever the government data we have it matches with all these interest data that it definitely help to reduce the mortality it reduce the length of stay and it is very very cost effective thank you very much thanks for patience and hearing me if you have any question all is open before price distribution yes so after covid uh, in march 2020 there is a med uh, telemedicine law of india is 104 pages draft which the government has uh, immediately approved that was in the process since last five years but then that was approved so that is available online available so as per uh, that law it is a shared responsibility that means it is a responsibility of the primary consultants it is responsibility of the teleconsultants and whatever the consultants who are involved, everybody is responsible. Pardon? Hmm. No, that there is an NDA, so you can't share it anywhere. It is it is a contract that uh, yes, 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 yes. See, it it is a it is a part of a HIS. What they consider it is a part of HIS. So you can't share this uh, uh, with uh, other uh, things. So this is somewhat like what is going on nowadays on WhatsApp messages and WhatsApp videos and photographs. So that is why we thought, ki, how does this work actually? Because with WhatsApp availability, now the residents are show, sending us photographs and report, photographs of reports. Hmm. So how far, I mean, that is a, that has a medical legal aspect. See again, WhatsApp. That is an uh, though they they are telling encrypted, but that is not a hundred percent safe. Mm -hmm. And second thing, uh, initially we have started with WhatsApp, but then we stop mm -hmm. when we do pilot in 2017. But we stop because some inst uh, some images mm -hmm. you cannot identify, and all the collective data you cannot have a in a, in a, in, a, in a small screen. So that's why we are not advocating uh, the mobile use in tele telemedicine. It is a proper console and the person has to sit there and taking a clinical decision. Because you can't see MRI uh, uh, in, a, in a mobile and, and, and diagnose. So we are not advocating the, the mobile use in tele-ICU. Yes. So we have... Uh, the initially this concept started by Philips in 2010 in India, uh, Dr. N. Ramakrishnan will go back to the history. So from Chennai, he was managing 10 ICUs of uh, Tennessee, that's a North Carolina from India. So because there is a scarcity of critical care specialists in, in USA, so he was managing 10 ICUs. And the Philips is, uh, uh, he, he's, he has a, uh, Philips has software since last more than 20 years. But that was very costly because uh, the the development cost is, is, is huge. So we have started developing uh, our own software since last five years. So that costing roughly around the software cost, if you want to buy the software, roughly around 5 lakh rupees total software and you have annual maintenance cost plus if you tell about the total installment cost like the bedside camera integration uh, software uh, plus your uh, mobile kiosk and uh, HIS everything costing you around 5 lakh rupees 5 to 10 lakh rupees in between depends on on your uh, layout of the ICU and uh, total capacity of the ICU. But that is, I think, it's just like one ventilator. So I don't think that is too costly. We have data uh, of a government that if with a 10 ICU, if they keep uh, round the clock physician, and their cost is roughly around, uh, for a 10 ICU, uh, the one ICU th is 25 lakh rupees per month. Uh, for 10 ICU, 
सो टोटल कॉस्ट थ्री सी आर सो अवर कॉस्ट इज वन थर्ड और लेस देन इट इज वन फिफ्थ सॉरी सो विद फोर्टी लैक रुपीज वी आर मैनेजिंग टेन आईसीयूज फॉर होल वन ईयर तो इट इज वेरी वेरी कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव टोटल एट द मोमेंट विद टेन आईसीयूज वी आर वन ट्वेंटी टू बेड्स so it is cost effective most important thing you can treat patient in real time in last one year i'll tell you two three interesting that in a vera uh, the patient come and they tell that this patient is in ncaf and uh, uh, the patient doesn't want to go to higher center so we thought that uh, we told them that just try bipap they don't have bipap machine they have ventilator after covid all the government hospital has more than 25 ventilators each hospital believe me so i told them just put a bipap and after putting bipap in a two hours patient become awake so they they got shocked ke sir au to mara chhella varsh ma dar mahine be patient aavi the jata rahe je they are not aware because the abg facility is not aware, not available so they 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 don't think about the co2 retention a basic thing very very basic thing so if you want to visit my command center you are uh, most uh, welcome at my uh, at amdavad command center at bopal any more question thank you very much thank you and once again a big cheers for all the organizers of karam sad for a wonderful wonderful feast of knowledge entertainment and great gathering thank you very much thanks